I had a viewer ask this rather logical question the other day. Um, how come Americans moving abroad are expats, whereas foreigners moving to the United States are immigrants? Just asking. I, he had a really good point. I chatted with him a bit, and it turns out he's actually English and living in, in uh, France. But his question is one that comes up quite frequently in American expat discussions. It happens all the time. So, have you ever wondered why some people who move to work in a different country are called expats and others are called immigrants? What's the difference between the two words? It's easy to compare the dictionary definition of these two words, but the way people use them shows how they, they think about immigration and the people that do it. Both groups leave their old homes to find better conditions elsewhere. Aside from that, there are often deeper reasons why people try to use one word versus the other. Sometimes it's just a term they've heard and they've stuck with it, though it could be based on some socioeconomic or racial factors, and it's often plain old-fashioned xenophobia. So what is it that makes expats different than immigrants? Hey, do me a favor. If you like this sort of content, let me know by liking the video and ringing the bell. That lets me know what sort of videos I should do in the future, and it really helps out the channel. Thanks a lot. Now, one place to start is with the actual definitions of expats and immigrants in the dictionary. Now, the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, a very popular dictionary that we're all very familiar with, for the word expatriate, it means to leave one's native country to live elsewhere. So expatriate, obviously, is how we get expat. While immigrant means to come to another country in which one is not native for permanent residence. Okay, that is that is basically the same thing. In the context of most American expats I know, they fully intend to live in their new countries around the globe for good. In fact, I was just talking to my friend Greg the other day. He lives in Thailand. We know each other from Florida. He's about 57 or so and has been in Chiang Mai since 2020. And he has absolutely no plans to ever return to the U.S. In fact, we got to discussing some of the funeral traditions in, in Thailand. And he told me his plans for when he dies. Hopefully a very long time from now. But in Thailand, he expects to live and die there in Thailand. Now, he has a nice life there with a good woman. He has, by all definitions, immigrated to Thailand. No differently than my mother-in-law did uh, from the Philippines 50 years ago. But while Greg is called an American expat, my mother-in-law, and in fact my wife, because she came over when she was three, is they are immigrants. In the U.S., we are often conflicted. We proudly refer to ourselves as a nation of immigrants, and we're happy to tout our Italian or Irish or, or German or other European heritage. News stories about first-generation high achievers often lead with this person being the son or daughter of immigrants. But when we move, we like to call ourselves expats. So, is there a socioeconomic connotation with the word expat and immigrant? Uh, maybe so. I, I think we often hear expats in relation to American retirees and digital nomads happily wandering the globe in search of adventure. Now, while immigrants in today's context uh, tends to take on the image of a person desperately moving to another country in search of work. Now, I have heard some people say that they think of expat as someone that is simply living out of the country but does not intend to live there permanently, kind of temporary, I guess. So if that's the case, I would say that digital nomads would align more closely with the term than, again, say Americans that have moved with no intention of returning. Now, I recently read an interesting article by Dr. Nick Subterello, and I am likely mispronouncing that name, so please let me know in the comments if you know how to say it. But he's a linguist, and he did an interesting study where he looked at a database that tracks English language uh, books and magazines and websites and news articles across 20 different countries, so it's pretty large. Now, the database is massive. It's almost 2 billion words. He then looked for the words expat and immigrant and looked for adjectives that fell within so many words before or after those two words. So, for instance, if an article said, Midwestern businesses have relied on cheap, unskilled immigrant labor to power industry and agriculture, 
he would record that instance of the adjectives cheap and unskilled and then compile that data to see what adjectives appeared more often next to which word. So that's an actual sentence from an article I just randomly found. But as you can see on the screen, when he totaled these, there are some really interesting findings. For example, low skilled and unskilled are most often associated with immigrants, but then so again is high skilled. Illegal is also almost, almost exclusively aligned with immigrant. British, American, French, and Chinese are associated more likely with expat, while Hispanic, Mexican, Haitian, Bangladeshi are often labeled as immigrant. So you can see there's a clear, there's a clear distinction there. He does conclude a few points. He does state, in particular, when people move from less wealthy nations, for example, Bangladesh, Haiti, and Mexico, to more wealthy nations, they tend to be described as immigrants. When they move from wealthy nations, for example, the U.S. and the U.K. and Australia, or the West generally, to any other country, they are more likely to be labeled expats. Now, one thing I tend to see is an assumption that immigrants are expected to fully assimilate, while expats are not really expected to have that same level of burden, that same obligation. Now that may be a generalization and perhaps that's my perspective as an American, but in US there is a constant debate about what level of assimilation is expected, if not demanded, of newcomers. Are cultural norms and language and religion, etc. to be pushed aside in favor of attempt to fit in? But do American expats always embrace that same philosophy when moving overseas? Now, I can tell you the answer to that is not always consistent. Now, obviously, some Americans try very hard to adapt to their new culture, and they take the attitude that they are a guest, and they do their best to go along and get along, but at the same time, they often can't help being American especially when living in another country where all of a sudden they find themselves on the upper end of the economic scale. While other American expats are happy to live a life in their new adopted country, but make, but they make no special effort to assimilate, and due to their financial status, they often don't have to. Now, I don't think we can solve this debate, but I do see this discussion appear on every single expat group I belong to. It pops up over and over again, and there's a lot of heated debate. There's always some offense taken when one term is used versus the other. And I'm not making a judgment call on any of this. I have my own ideas on what I would prefer, but I'm curious about what you think. Are you living outside of your home country? If so, do you think of yourself as an expat or an immigrant in your new home? What do you think contributes to this debate uh, on what we should call each other and ourselves? Incidentally, have you thought about moving out of the U.S.? If so, you might want to check out this list of, of top 10 countries right there uh, to move to from the U.S. If you'd like to see some Q&A with different expats, just to get an idea of what other countries may be a good fit for you, take a look at our destinations playlist. I think you'll really like it. So in the meantime, until we talk again, keep on trekking.